VeChain has had a pullback of 36%. And I'm going to go through this technical analysis today and show you why this is actually pretty good for VeChain and sees VeChain actually having a good surge back to the upside. Guys, as we get into it, if you find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that if you are new to the channel. Then do subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here. Right, let's dive into this VeChain technical analysis and talk about what is going on here. So VeChain has obviously seen some interesting moves. We're going to start with this weekly chart. So we are using Binance as a data source. There are these five impulse waves to the upside. Um, and during these five impulse waves, there are two correction waves. This is important to note because although there are um, on this bigger time frame five impulse waves, um, each wave will also contain a load of different waves as well. Okay, and so when we talk about a 30% pullback or a 36% pullback here for VeChain, this is not unusual. This is something that we see multiple times during one of our impulse waves to the upside. And um, so although it was unnatural in uh, in the way that it came about, i.e. Bitcoin was manipulated and kind of uh, had a pretty significant pullback on the back of the El Salvador news, um, this actually then put the rest of the crypto market back into these kind of corrections. Now, this is actually a pretty good thing for VeChain because it actually puts it in a very strong position. And I'm going to go through why. Um, we can see that this was a 36% pullback, but we've had significant pullbacks of similar kind of uh, percentage points during our third impulse wave. So just here in the middle of our third impulse wave, we can see that we dropped 37%. Okay, this actually happens a couple of times during our journey to the upside. And these kind of corrections are very natural because they help us correct our key technical data that underlines and underpins the candle moves. So we can see that the stochastic was corrected during this point here, and then allowed us to surge up to that fantastic high up here with peak at three. Now from the low of March 2020 and the peak up here of wave three in April, this was a 399 day move that saw 18,295% in gains. So again, that would not have been possible if it was not for these nice healthy corrections that you see in the middle. So although it can be frustrating and a bit uncertain at this time as to what's going to happen next for VeChain, for me, I'm going to walk you through what I think is going to happen and why I think this is a very good thing for VeChain. So right now from our current position up to our $1 level, uh, which is where our Fibonacci 4.236 extension lands, is 724%. Okay, so some uh, pullback has actually meant we've seen more percentage gains now, so a bigger opportunity if we want to see some additional gains. With that being said, uh, you know, you can dollar cost average uh, is always a good strategy to have. We can see that we had a dip down on our stochastic during this kind of pullback on this weekly chart. And again, this actually puts it back just underneath the oversold air, uh, overbought area. So again, we can come back up into this overbought area nice and strongly. Again, very similar to where we were with the start of our third impulse wave. There was a small pullback just here in the middle, just this one here. And if I actually go and show you the percentage point uh, drop on this, uh, I'll grab it from here to here, we actually dropped 38%. And then we started to see a really good, strong surge to the upside. So we know that there's a couple of points that we will expect to see these natural pullbacks. And the percentage points that we've dropped currently is pretty much in line with what we've seen happen in the past during this really bullish third impulse wave to the upside. So we are not concerned. I'm not concerned. And, um, you know, I think VeChain's in for a pretty good run this uh, this fifth wave. So with that being said, this weekly chart is looking very, very good. The structure hasn't changed. It's pretty much in line with all expectations, although it can be frustrating when we don't expect certain things to come uh, the way that they did. That being said, it's good to get things over with nice and fast so we can move on really, really well. So let's jump down into our daily view and we'll get a little bit more clarity over what's been going on most recently and what is being structurally now presented to us. Here we can see that interesting pullback with the accumulation zone just at the bottom here. And I'll get into that in a moment. The 36% pullback from our high point of this particular candle here and down to where we wicked into. Now, on this daily chart, we can see that before this pullback, uh, we actually were tracking in an overbought area. And because of this pullback, we're now oversold. We take a look at where we were during our kind of fourth wave correction and these low areas that we had been in previously. So this sideways correction, uh, correction here was oversold. And we take a look down at the bottom here, we were oversold, right? Um, during this motion here, we were overbought. 
and then this area was overbought okay now ideally we were actually looking to sustain being up here for a bit longer before we had that pullback that kind of sideways trade um but this kind of pullback from bitcoin did push us along a little bit so it just sped things up um so ultimately put us back down into this oversold area we can now take advantage of pushing everything back to the upside in a really significant way the recovery so far from the bounce has been pretty good uh, and if we were to see some lower lows i'm going to point out where they would come in so right now we can see that we are battling some interesting resistance areas because this is an area that we were battling previously as long as we hold the support level at 11.5 cent for v chain here i think we're in for a pretty good strong recovery from this uh, kind of recent pullback um so everything on this daily chart is actually pretty good it looks pretty reasonable and nothing unusual to, uh, other than the fact that we did wick down below a couple of these areas which again would have been a good buying opportunity when we actually jump down into our hourly view this is where we actually take a look at the most recent kind of price action and we try to dissect it a little bit to see exactly what was going on um so obviously we were tracking inside a bit of a parallel channel right we're testing the resistance lines we're testing the support lines and we're losing support um just around our resistance line of 15.2 and then we lost the trend line altogether as bitcoin had its pullback during this kind of uh, pullback there was a bounce from our previous trend line that was tracking up here uh, we bounced from this trend line um, but then we found resistance just up here and then we pulled back losing this trend altogether and going down into these lower areas down here we got the bounce and we pushed right up to this area now this is key because when we actually take this candle down to our low areas down here and um, what we can do is we can take a look at where we bounced to so always be aware guys that everything will bounce when you see corrections like this don't panic sell wait for the bounce um, and what you'll find is you'll bounce to one of three key areas okay the 618 the 702 and the 786 and um, so in the case of v chain here we actually bounced all the way up to the 786 and was rejected okay so what a good strategy tends to be is that you put a, a stop loss in place and you kind of target a buyback if you um you know, if you go actually do close a candle above the 786, for example, right? Um, so obviously in the case of VeChain here, we were rejected from this area. And as a result, we went down lower, right? Now, normally, if this is a bearish scenario, what you would find is you would actually slip down much lower. Let me just make this a little bit easier to see, right? Um, so because this rejection came in here at the 786, normally you'd go to a new lower low, okay? So in theory, we should have fallen down all the way down here, lower than our previous low. But because we were actually in a bullish scenario, we didn't see this. Instead, we saw this come down. We went down to this area and we actually bounced back up again, oversold, right? Um, and we we're pushing back up. But now we are still fighting some interesting areas, okay? Um, but the good news is if I grab hold of our Fibonacci retracement tool, put it on our rejection point here, and then put on our low point here, um, and if I actually expand this across, we can now see that we're up against a very similar scenario. Okay, we are being rejected from the same 786 area that we were rejected from previously. Now, the trick, guys, that's going to come in from here is whether or not we are going to set a higher low than this one over this side. If we do set a higher low, then that's a very bullish tell that actually we are not going down any lower and we're on the continuous growth to the upside. And we're, all we're going to do is get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed until we break past the 786 area and we basically go re bullish and we have a really good recovery out of this area. Okay, again, this is why we track these yellow box areas, right? These yellow box areas are always going to be our 786, uh, 702, and 618 areas, right? Because these are the real areas of concern and where we see the main battle actually occurring so right now we are on a pullback because we're overbought on this hourly chart now the trick here for v chain is going to be to lower our um our stochastic rsi lose that momentum without doing too much damage to the price i.e make sure that we stay above 10.6 cent okay now on this journey to the downside we can see that we were finding good support around here so a correction down towards our 11.5 cent could be a nice interesting area to hold correcting our stochastic and allowing us to grow above our 786 getting that closed candle being the bullish tail that then takes us to the next level. So overall, the market's still a bit indecided uh, on how things are performing, but it's definitely looking bullish rather than bearish. We should have already gone to a new lower low if we're in a bearish scenario. The fact that we 
haven't done this yet is actually very positive and very, very bullish. So overall, we're just waiting now to see that 786 area actually break and for a good piece of traction to the upside. So overall, everything here is looking pretty good. Um, but if we're ever in doubt, it's always good to also check a few other platforms out and get some other information outside of our charts. Um, for this, I like to use the Evide.io dashboard. The Evide.io dashboard uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to give you an unbiased approach to the data that underlines VeChain. So for VeChain here, we're able to ascertain what the fear and greed index is, what the AMI had ratio, the sharp ratio, the averages, the return on investment are from an AI perspective rather than a human perspective. This allows us to understand whether or not the data is flagging anything major that could be of concern to us. And um, so in the case of VeChain, no major moves have happened, right? We can see that there's been a percentage drop in value, um, but actually the underlying value of the data that sits behind VeChain hasn't changed. It's still an A3 rated cryptocurrency and it has been performing incredibly well. We can see that the fear and greed index has dropped down. It's no longer greedy. It's quite neutral in position. Um, but again, what we see here from a neutral position is a relatively good motion back to the upside. We have seen this previously um, during August where we had a bit of a pullback with our fear and greed index from the extremely greedy scenario. And then we started to see it go right back up into that greedy area. So again, this looks like it's gonna be something relatively similar where we could start to see a good push back to the upside um, and start to see VeChain turn very, very greedy again. I think we just have to be a little bit patient with, uh, with the, the recent kind of pullback we've seen in the market and get a little bit more confidence from people back in. The AMI had ratio is showing no problems with liquidity. The sharp ratio is also looking okay. The pullback did bring us close to our 50 day average, but actually has started to move back to the upside. The sharp ratio shows us a uh, risk to reward and for VeChain here, a uh, B2 rating, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. And it's actually showing us as a pretty reasonable position to hold VeChain. We can see that the return on investment is still the best with A1 rating. And again, uh, it would be considered we've had over 18,000% in gains. Overall, the VeChain rating and the VeChain data that sits behind Divide.io hasn't indicated any issues or anything that I should be worried about. We also like to couple this up with what's going on with Glassnode. Is there anything going on with Bitcoin? What are the inflows to exchanges looking like? What are the outflows? What are the deposits looking like? And there's nothing flagging inside Glassnode either to indicate any potential issues with VeChain um, or specifically Bitcoin that would have an impact on VeChain. So overall, everything is being structurally changed a little bit, but is also now starting to interest us because it is indicating that we are looking for another push back to the upside, specifically with the daily chart and um, the weekly chart. The structure is still intact, hasn't changed. The, the pullbacks that we've seen are pretty much in line with our expectations of previous waves. Um, and again, guys, now we've had a really sharp correction and we should look for a nice surge to the upside and then we'll be looking for a sideways trade for a period. And um, because like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, there are five impulse waves. Uh, one will be sharp uh, correction and one will be a flat correction. Um, and then there will be basically three large impulse waves to the upside. So overall, um, we're looking for two corrections. This is the first correction within our fifth wave and it's a sharp one. So there's gonna be another correction at a later date that will be quite testing because it's gonna be slow. It's gonna be slow and um, you know, steady. And once we get past that one, we'll see a nice good push to the upside before we close the bull run off. Guys, hopefully you have found this VeChain video useful and informative. If you have, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then do subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here. With this said, done, and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.